Hi everyone. Welcome to MedSurge Mentor. First of all, let me thank all my viewers for your wonderful support. Today, I'll be going over a topic from cardiovascular system, which is myocarditis. So let's get started. Let's begin with the definition of myocarditis. Myocarditis is the inflammation of the heart muscle that decreases the ability of the heart to pump blood normally. Next is etiology of myocarditis. Etiologies are divided into three and they are infectious causes, immune related causes and toxic myocarditis. Let's see each of this in detail. First of all, let's see the infectious causes of myocarditis. They are viruses such as cytomegalovirus and hepatitis C virus, bacteria such as Staphylococcus and Streptococcus, protozoa like Toxoplasma gondii and Toxoplasma cruzi, parasites such as Ascaris and Tinea solium, fungus like Actinomyces and Candida, and spirochetes like Borrelia and Leptospira. Among this, viruses are the most common cause of infectious myocarditis. Immune related causes of myocarditis. They are allergens like colchicine, methyl dopa and penicillin, alloantigens in heart transplant rejections, and autoantigens which are present in conditions like myasthenia gravis, scleroderma, systemic lupus erythematosus, and thyrotoxicosis. Etiology of toxic myocarditis. They are drugs like amphetamine, cocaine, and lithium, heavy metals such as copper, iron, and lead, physical agents like electric shock and radiation, other causes such as bee stings, scorpion, spider, and snake bites. Now let's move on to the pathophysiology of myocarditis. They are divided into three phases and they are Phase 1, viral infection and replication. Phase 2, autoimmunity and injury. And Phase 3, dilated cardiomyopathy. They are also known as acute stage, subacute stage and chronic stage respectively. Now let's get into the details of pathophysiological changes in myocarditis. Phase 1 is characterized by active viral infection and replication. It can be triggered by either infectious or non-infectious causes. During this phase, initial myocyte injury takes place, causing release of antigenic intracellular components such as myosin into the bloodstream. In phase 2, there is activation of heart-specific autoimmunity and inflammatory response. At the same time, there is local release of cytokines such as interleukin-1, interleukin-2, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor and nitrous oxide. This play a crucial role in T-cell reaction and autoimmune activation. In phase 3, there are three possibilities. There can be cardiac tissue recovery or inflammatory dilated cardiomyopathy or permanent dilated cardiomyopathy. Viruses may cause myocyte apoptosis which means the cell death and in later stages of immune activation, cytokines play a leading role in the remodeling and progressive heart failure. Clinical features of myocarditis. They are shortness of breath at rest or during physical activity, fluid retention in legs, ankles and feet, fatigue, chest pain or chest discomfort, arrhythmias, skin rashes, 
symptoms of viral infection such as headache, body aches, joint pain, fever, sore throat and diarrhea. Diagnostic measures of myocarditis. First of all, let's see the common physical examination findings in patients with myocarditis. They are tachycardia, hypotension, fever, S3-S4 gallops, pulmonary rails and wheezes, distended neck veins, and peripheral edema. Other common diagnostic studies are blood test, electrocardiography, chest radiograph, echocardiography, radionuclide ventriculography, myocardial imaging, cardiac catheterization, and endomyocardial biopsy. Common complications of myocarditis are heart failure, heart attack, stroke, arrhythmias, dilated cardiomyopathy, and sudden cardiac death. Management of myocarditis. Common pharmacological managements are angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors such as enlapril and captopril, angiotensin receptor blocking agents such as losartan and valsartan, diuretics like furosemide, beta blockers such as metoprolol and bisoprolol and antibiotic therapy. Other supportive managements of myocarditis are hypodynamic and cardiac monitoring, physical activity monitoring, oxygen supplementation, fluid management and low sodium diet. Invasive procedures done to treat myocarditis are ventricular assist devices, intra-iotic balloon pump, and extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Let's go through each of them in brief. First one is ventricular assist devices. They are mechanical pumps that helps to pump blood from the weakened lower heart chambers. Similarly, intra-arctic balloon pump is also a mechanical device that helps to pump blood from the weakened ventricles by reducing the left ventricular after load. I have explained them in my previous videos. And the third procedure is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Here, blood is removed from the veins, which then passes through the special membrane in the machine which removes carbon dioxide and adds oxygen into the blood. This method allows blood to bypass heart and lungs, allowing them to rest and get better. Common nursing diagnosis of patients with myocarditis are decreased cardiac output related to myocardial inflammation, risk for imbalanced body temperature related to infection, Activity intolerance related to impaired cardiac muscle function. Fatigue related to inflammation and impaired cardiac output. Anxiety related to possible long-term effects of the disorder. And excess fluid volume related to the compensatory mechanisms. Nursing care of patients with myocarditis are Check vital signs and intake output. Monitor pain characteristics and administer analgesics. Administer supplemental oxygen and ensure saturation more than 95%. Ensure bed rest to reduce myocardial oxygen requirements. Position comfortably, preferably in the semi follows position. Ensure rest and activity according to the degree of tolerance. Provide a calm and quiet environment. Ensure a high protein, high carbohydrate, low sodium diet. And monitor for signs and symptoms of organ damage.
with this we are finishing the review of myocarditis we have seen its etiology pathophysiology clinical features diagnostic measures management and nursing care please let me know your valuable comments and suggestions thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos